Welcome back everyone, my name is Ember, and today we are continuing our One Piece journey with volume, what is this, volume 34. <laughs> um, we are getting, we are finally getting into Water 7 now. This covers chapters, uh, one, no, I can't count, chapters 317 to 327, so not, this is another 11 chapter volume, so this is the end of uh, Luffy's fight with Foxy. All the way up through um, the reveal that the Merry Go needs to be scuttled. So, um, uh, yeah, this was a really solid volume. Uh, before we jump into Water Seven, let's finish up uh, the Long Ring Long Land arc, as it's known, also known as the Davy Back fight. Um, it had an okay ending. I was not pissed off. Like, it had some really, had some cool turns, like Luffy using the mirror to reflect um, Foxy's slow, slow beam. And just had some really fucking cool paneling and stuff, some awesome spreads like this. And really drove home the point that Luffy, um, the the idea of camaraderie amongst the Straw Hats. Luffy is going to do anything, anything for his crew. Um, which I imagine is going to come up at some point, most likely in the next volume, uh, because of certain things. But we'll get there when we get there. But, so, um, overall, um, Davy Back was definitely my least favorite arc so far. Very much dragged, but, and was a lot longer than it needed to be. I didn't think it was the worst thing ever, but it certain and it, it could. I'm not gonna say we, we didn't need it at all, because there are some ideas that are necessary. I think for what's gonna happen later, but it definitely needed to be reworked, in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, that's out of the way, and immediately Water Seven starts off with a fucking bang with this d fucking dude, Aokiji. This dude is a fucking beast. I f immediately love this guy. I thought he was going to be a real seedy kind of guy, the way he was interacting with Robin at first, but turns out he's one of the three uh, admirals of the Navy. Um, I assume we'll get to meet the other two at some point. But, man, this guy is an absolute fucking beast. Immediately um, pushes the Straw Hats shit in without even trying. Um, with these fucking insane ice powers. Like, he completely puts Robin and Luffy on ice. Like, where is this spread? Like, the, just... Man, the dude is just so imposing. Really cool design. Now, not a design I would have expected for this kind of character, but he just looks so fucking cool. This ice time thing, just so... It puts Luffy on ice. He stops him cold. <clears throat> this, this man is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm very interested in seeing how he'll sh what he'll do if he shows up later. Well, I imagine he will, but... Very interested in seeing more of him. We're get, we're starting to see more Logia type um devil fruit people. Like I think he's the third one that we've met so far. We have Captain Smoker, Eneru, and now Aokiji. So very interesting. Very cool character. I like the lazy part of him as well. That that bit um made made him that much cooler. Like he's just this kind of a he just wants to kind of bum around, doesn't really want to do anything more than necessary, but when he when he gets going, uh, you can't fucking stop him. Um, oh, and this is a point that I keep forgetting to bring up in these uh, vlogs. I know you've mentioned it a lot in the comments, but we're starting to see more and more of Luffy's history, more particularly his history in, pertain in relation to Gold Roger uh, pop-up. Like, the, the 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 legacy of D has been a lot of, has been popping up a lot lately, and then 
in this particular volume, um, Aokiji refer talks about Luffy's grand grandfather. Um, don't know who that is yet, but I'm I like that we're start we're slowly starting to see some really cool backstory with Luffy pop up. That is it's getting me really hyped because Lu Luffy does not did not seem particularly excited about Aokiji mentioning his grandfather. So very interested in seeing what that's all about. Um, but yes, yeah. um, and of course we're starting to see. Mo Aokiji throws our uh, suspicion back onto Robin as sort of a no good kind of lady and we're seeing more of that pop up again once we get into really get into Water 7 the city she kind of just goes off her on her own with this mysterious dude from I guess CP9 was the name of the organization don't know what that means yet but I assume we'll find out soon so a lot of very uh duplicitous women in one piece i've noticed that that definitely seems to be a bit of a theme like let's we had nami to start with and now robin uh hopefully uh robin's story is just as good as nami's because arlong park is still my favorite arc of one piece so far so hopefully robin's story lives up to the precedent that nami's set uh yeah i think I'm very excited in seeing where they... Oh, and there's just so much cool shit that gets introduced in this volume. Like the fucking sea train. That's so fucking cool. A train that... Where there's like just a little... Where there's just a little bit of track under the water. And just... We're getting a lot more mechanical in One Piece. And the, all the... Just fucking Water 7 as a city looks so cool. Let me find that fucking approaching shot again just some really cool uh this background spreads just some landscape spreads the inside of the where is it the uh the inside of the shipping yard looks so fucking cool it's just this massive fucking place and the like we're so used to seeing the scale of nature in One Piece, but now we're really starting to see the scale of more man-made areas and how industrious man really is in this world. So we're starting to get into the parts where people have actually tamed the Grand Line a bit, and that's really cool. Uh, and of course, um, Mr. Iceberg, really cool kind of dude. Um as the head of the ship. I'm assuming Water 7 is a reference to the seven shipping companies that um, Mr. Iceberg brought under his control. Um, if not, that's a bit of a red herring, but that's a cool idea too. Just, just this entire town founded on industry and such. I just real, I really like the aesthetic of Water 7 so far. It's just kind of, it's seafaring as One Piece usually is, but it's also got this little industrial tinge to it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, what else was there? Um, the the running gag with the losing the money. Zip. I was very on edge about that, because it's like, okay, obviously they're going to lose the money at some point, so when are they going to lose it? And so far, I guess they haven't actually lost it. Like, it's been out of their possession a little bit, but it never got completely lost, and they had to go out and find it. Uh, so, that was a bit of a surprise for me. Um, sorry if I'm rushing through this a bit. I, have, I still have a little bit of editing for this audio, other video left to do, but... Yeah, this is really cool. I liked um, Kokoro, the train driver. She was real cool. There's a lot of really cool characters getting introduced in this. Um, Zoro kicks the shit out of the Frankie family's um, henchmen. And I know that there is a ca character named Frankie that shows up in one point and he is going to be part of the the Straw Hats. So I don't really know anything about him other than that he's a cyborg, I guess. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Probably in the next volume or so. We'll see. But, um, yeah, just a whole lot of really cool setup 
from this volume. Very interested in seeing where the subplot with the Mary Go is going to go. I'd seen a little bit of it when I saw One Piece on Toonami, and I know there's this big falling out with Usopp coming because it's the Mary Go. It's the ship that was grant gifted to him by uh, Kaya from Surf Village. So, interested in seeing exactly how that pans out. But that will be for another time. Overall, very strong volume. Big rebound after the fucking Long Ring, Long Land arc. Uh, yeah. Oh, and the, the, the bulls, the Yabaras or whatever, there's... I, the sea life here is just really cool. Again, just a lot of cool world-building details. But that's about it for this video. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow. And be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment and all that jazz. My name is Ember, and I'll see you next time.